What's going on? How are you guys today? We are going to discuss my hair mineral analysis tests and I've actually gotten several of these over the past two years but before that there's quite a bit we have to go over. So as much as most doctors modern medicine isn't good they still have access to tests especially blood work that is very useful for seeing certain markers. Granted most modern doctors don't use them as they should be from the holistic perspective me as you know just some guy that does nutrition videos on youtube that knows more than these doctors doesn't have access to the tests so when i consult people i have to tell them okay try to ask your doctor to get them blood work you can use walkinlab.com which i do that's actually illegal in new york so i have to drive to connecticut to get my blood work after i pay a few hundred dollars and i usually just look at like my testosterone my vitamin d some liver markers so you kind of have to have an idea of what you're looking for and then you can actually you know pay some money yourself granted you're able to same with the hair mineral analysis it's actually illegal in new york so i have to use like an online shipper called ship it to shapito i don't know but they send the hair mineral analysis to shapito shapito sends it to me i give them my hair sample i send it back so i actually got an affiliate link to evenbetternow.com for this hair analysis. I try to get this myself as a practitioner, but completely illegal in New York, even a doctor can't have it. So I'd have to like be a registered nutritionist or something in Pennsylvania. So the affiliate link was the only real option. And between this and certain blood work, it's really the most accurate test we have. However, you know, you're taking a hair sample. So whatever period of time that hair was growing, whatever you were supplementing, what your diet was at that time is going to be indicative of the hair sample. So the way to really get a clean hair sample is to like shave your armpits, your pubic hair and let it grow in while you're like on a diet, not supplementing over the course of one or two or three months and then use that hair sample. Because if you just take stuff from your head or you've been supplementing crazy amounts of certain things, you're not following a consistent diet, it's going to be all over the place. And some of my earlier hair mineral analysis tests are indicative of that. Um, so if you go to the affiliate link I put down below, you're going to see a few different tests. Some are like $100, some are $120. The difference between the price is you get a write-up, uh, which we will read. And it is, it's pretty useful. Now, the dietary advice and the supplement suggestions they have aren't necessarily what you should be doing and and we'll talk about that a little bit so the very first mineral analysis i had i was still completely carnivore it was march of 2019 although i was about a year into having uh, my severe health issues and looking at this all you could really say is all right frank you're super low on all the minerals like they might be balanced but you need to supplement them to some degree basically across the board what is impressive is the toxic elements are very low because you know grass-fed beef is free of pollutants and the reason you would want to follow a high quality organic carnivore diet temporarily is mainly to detox the negative stuff you know arsenic aluminum lead mercury all of those are typically very high in the average person but not me so uh, i wasn't toxic with the bad elements but i didn't have enough of the nutritional elements and this has no indication of my liver damage whatsoever uh, which is why we also have to look at other markers like blood work about a year later in early 2020 was when I started experimenting with more supplements, trying to fix things. And you could see things like changed a lot. Uh, my magnesium, sodium, and potassium went way, way, way high. And it's not bad that they're high because they're electrolyte minerals and they get released fairly quickly. The thing is they need to be balanced with other stuff. And you, know, you could see on the bottom, my magnesium went from 3.8 to 54.3, which tells me that, you know, you shouldn't get this hair analysis when you're supplementing stuff because uh, the levels in the tissue for that period of time are so high. Uh, the mercury did go a little higher, nothing significant, but it does say that something I was eating is, uh, is not good. Uh, now we're moving on to the third test. And the reason I'm not discussing those two first tests that much is because you know I was basically carnivore, I wasn't correcting my health issues. And here we see a pretty significant difference in, in the mineral profiles. So the sodium and potassium is still pretty high. Uh, the sodium isn't as crazy elevated as it was. The magnesium isn't as crazy high because I kind of stopped that, but all of the other minerals are much higher, which is good, I'm happy with. You know, my selenium's going up, my manganese is going up, my myelobdenum. 
what I really need to do here is I need more copper, I need more zinc, I need more calcium and magnesium. Uh, I guess I would say Paramount really need to supplement the calcium and magnesium in high amounts to balance it with the sodium and potassium. Uh, that's probably why I don't have that much energy lately and that's the first thing I really, really, really need to fix. The other minerals just have to kind of come up slightly in some regard to just be more balanced with each other. Unfortunately, something I've been eating does have toxic elements in it. So my arsenic and aluminum have gone to moderate, which is not good. And I've never had levels of toxic elements this high ever. So I can only assume that either the rice or some of the grains I'm eating have arsenic, and maybe the cans or some of the packaging, especially the coconut oil I'm buying, has aluminum. Uh, so what I should probably do is switch to all glass containers when I'm purchasing from the store and try to get that aluminum back down, or I can try to take uh, some detox clays and zeolite and see if that goes. So this will give me a pretty good chance to, um, to test out that zeolite that uh, Victor has been pushing on me, which I haven't been uh, you know, too, uh, too comfortable with, but we'll see how it works. The additional elements, like all that weird stuff down there, the rubidium, bismuth, barium, germanium, I'm not too worried about it all. Uh, I do want to see if there's rubidium in something I'm eating too. So uh, the main concern here that, that came up was uh, the higher levels of toxic elements, the crazy imbalance of sodium and potassium to the other electrolyte minerals, calcium and magnesium, and uh, rubidium, not big of a deal. Now, some of their supplement suggestions are correct. It's just you know going their ways, You know the stuff they sell, it's not necessarily the best way to go about it. So they're telling me to take their calcium plus supplement, but I'm going to use Gerolsteiner, which is a high calcium mineral water, much more natural, minimally inflammatory option. The magnesium plus, yeah, I should be taking magnesium, but I'm going to be using a combination of a magnesium glycin oral supplement and my magnesium chloride spray. Uh, the zinc, not a fan of supplementing zinc, digestive enzyme. The types of enzymes can definitely cause liver issues. And I didn't look into their metabolic support supplement, but I'm sure there's issues with that as well. You want to really keep the additions to your diet minimal in the form of supplements. If you're going to put in something like pure selenium, if you're going to put in a mineral supplement, that's why I started organ supplements. So you can isolate minerals, take them on their own, monitor the dose, as opposed to just bombarding your body with giant amounts of, of different things. They did say I should be taking B6, but I think in general, most people need to take a complete B complex. Uh, so moving on, this is the write-up they're giving me. So the metabolic type and that type of stuff, like sympathetic dominance, increased thyroid function, increased adrenal activity, I wouldn't take that stuff as too high value. But what we do want to look at is the nutrient mineral levels. Uh, so they're saying I have a tendency towards type 1 insomnia, which is true. Elevated tissue, sodium, and high carbohydrate intake. Yes, I've been consuming a lot of carbohydrates, so they're right on that. Uh, potassium is regulated by the adrenal cortex. An increase in potassium frequently indicates increased adrenal cortical activity. Copper, copper is necessary for calcium and iron utilization. Rubidium is elevated above the established reference. It's a non-toxic element known to be associated with lithium. Also found to be elevated with potassium. So, you know, reading those few quick things, it gives us more of an idea of what we assumed. And then onto the nutrient mineral ratios, they're saying tissue calcium level has decreased. Yeah, we know we need to take calcium, so they're kind of enforcing that. Uh, the sodium to potassium ratio has improved somewhat, so that's good. Calcium potassium ratio, not good. I mean, this is basically saying, yeah, the electrolyte minerals are out of whack and we need to put them back in balance. Moving on to the toxic metals. So they do mention that the arsenic has increased as a concern and they start mentioning, you know, sources of arsenic. Uh, aluminum levels have increased as well. They're talking about sources of aluminum, what to avoid. And now moving on to the dietary suggestions. I'm not a fan of these at all because every single one is a problem with my current health context. They're telling you to increase your protein intake and telling you to eat seafood, which is going to put way more stress on the liver and also cause pollution issues, probably increase your toxic metals. Telling me to eat dairy when I can't eat dairy right now to reduce my carbohydrate intake, which is not really relevant in the context of drinking large amounts of probiotics like water kefir and to avoid all sugars and refined carbohydrates. They're telling you to avoid histamine food. So, you know, I don't, I don't really want to go through their dietary stuff and you know I would say that these suggestions might be more relevant to the average person someone that doesn't have too many health issues but you know generally speaking when you are getting a hair mineral analysis you do have 
really, really severe health issues and health problems. So uh, I think if you're knowledgeable or have someone like myself to talk to, that a hair mineral analysis is a very useful tool in monitoring your supplement intake. Uh, now, would I go with their dietary recommendations and their supplement recommendations? No. Um, you know, you can get this to see how you're doing. I mean, you know, a lot of you guys have watched many of my videos. You have an excellent understanding of nutrition. You don't really need my help with any of this. And everything that we kind of said in the first few minutes of looking at our third test, it was just confirmed with uh, the, the text and the write-up they gave us. So for that average person that isn't going to speak with me, it is nice to have the write-up afterwards just to kind of explain what I knew firsthand by looking at the, the levels. So uh, I kind of mentioned everything I'm going to be doing. I'm trying to supplement more magnesium, but it does give me insomnia. I'm increasing my calcium intake with the Gerolsteiner. I might try to just eat a little more meat and supplement more copper to get the copper and zinc up and uh, take some detox clays to try to remove that arsenic and aluminum that has now entered my body. Uh, I think um, I think really if I, if I can get my magnesium up, I'm going to be feeling a lot better very, very quickly. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. As I mentioned earlier, you can go to Even Better Now. The affiliate link is down in the description below. It's not much, but you know, I guess I, I can't afford to move out of my parents' house. I, I All of my businesses, I, I put the prices low. I try to give you guys what's fair and also what's, what's fair to me. And... I don't want to talk about that too much, but you can go to frank stefanocom to see all of my businesses. If you want high quality meat in your diet, we have Frankie's Free Range Meat. We have venison, uh, which to me, the copper ratio of venison is much better than beef. So um, leaning towards stuff like bison and venison does make more sense if you're in a severe health problem. We have Frankie's Free Range Foods, where you can get things like Flextros. Um, we have Organ Supplements, which is the main business for this video where I have all of the minerals on organ supplements as well as the bovine beef powders and some digestive enzymes. The masticum should be back soon. We have the magnesium spray on organ supplements and then we have Wi-Fi shielding as well as Frankie's Naturals. Wi-Fi shielding, very important. I always wear my shirt and underwear to reduce the oxidative stress from the radiation in my environment, which is important for detox pathways as well as digestion. And then we have Frankie's Naturals, which is high quality cosmetic products free of those pollutants, the aluminum, all that type of stuff. So you guys could see why I made all these businesses. It really does come together in improving your health. Uh, so thanks again for joining me today, guys. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and this uh, can give you something that can help you measure your health status and monitor it frequently. I'll see you guys tomorrow.